In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we're talking oil coolers. Why you'd want to run one and how to install it. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Now, if you've got a track car, a tow vehicle, a motorhome, or even an off-road vehicle that's been turbocharged like a tiny little K truck, <gasps> like this awesome car right here, you might find your oil temperatures starting to creep up the panties. And now why are climbing oil temperatures a bad thing? Because it can affect the composition of your oil, it can thin out too much, you can have problems like that, and then you can end up doing mechanical damage inside your engine. So keeping on top of the temperature of your engine, both by your cooling system, but also your oiling system, is a way to make sure that your engine will survive. And if you're asking more of it like we are with this, with its custom turbocharger setup, then an oil cooler could be good, cheap insurance, and it's not too hard to install with a few tips and tricks. Now, if you've got a track car as well, of course, oil is what is keeping your car doing more than a few laps at a time without going kablamo. Martin knows all about going kablamo at the racetrack, but high temperatures do make your oil deteriorate. They affect the viscosity, and that is where a cooler can come in. But what if it's too cold? That's another problem. So I'm going to show you what we're going to install. I'm going to show you why. Then Martin is going to show you what tools you're going to need. And then we're going to play some music and show you how to do it at home. So why would you run an oil cooler? Well, obviously it's in the name because you want your oil to run cooler if your car is under high loads or performance. I'm gonna show you how it's all set up here with my professional diagram. So here's what's gonna happen. The engine here, oil, it's gonna come out of the oil. It's gonna go into the filter. We are relocating the oil filter. Then it's gonna go out of, where's my bit? Looks, let's just pretend it's that. It's coming out of that, then it's going into this. Now what we're gonna do that's a little bit different is ours is going to run on a thermostat, which works just like a normal thermostat. Gets to a certain temperature, opens up with this switch here. Now, when it's not too hot, this here is just going to recirculate it, going back to the engine. But when it gets to a certain temperature, this here is gonna go blip loo with science. And then the hot oil is going to divert this way. It's gonna go down into the cooler out of the cooler, back down into this, and then back to the engine. Now, do you need one of these on your bog stock car? Probably not, either because your car's not gonna get the temperatures that are going to damage the oil enough anyway, or your car may already have one, like Subarus, Martin? Yeah. Subaru, GTIRs, maybe even some sure. other performance vehicles, except in those, they're cooled with coolant yeah. via a thing, yeah. whereas this is cooled with air, like a Porsche. We're basically mm. building a Porsche, aren't we? I mean, are we building a Porsche? Because they call them air-cooled Porsches, but realistically they're oil-cooled Porsches, aren't they? Because they got these. We're, we're building an air-cooled performance truck. Not a Porsche. No. All right. Martin <laughs> is now going to show you what tools you're going to need. These are the tools you're going to need to install your MAD oil cooler onto your MAD car. You're going to need an assortment of hand tools. I've got a selection out, but you're probably going to need way more than that. I don't really know yet because we haven't done it yet. What you are also going to, is going to come in handy are these AN spanners. Now, the kit uses some AN fittings, so there's lots of different kits. If you can get one that's made specifically for your car, do it because all the hose lengths will be correct. Um, this is a universal one and we may need to cut them down. So for that reason, we've also got an angle grinder and some tape and we may need to cut down some of these lines because these might actually be too long. Now this uses a dash 10 um, AN fitting. It might even be a 12, it's massive. Anyway, um, and you can shorten these and put on your own fittings, which either come in 90s or straights like that. And we're also gonna need to mount the cooler itself and mount the rest of the hardware. So drill, we're gonna jack the car up, so jack and jack stands. And also the thermostat is probably the most important part for a street car install. You don't have to run one of these, particularly if it's a race car and you're always at full tilt, but it is possible actually to overcool your oil and that's what a thermostat prevents. But to, to make this work, this is from a separate manufacturer that makes the kit, which makes the AN fittings. And so we're doing a bit of mixing and matching. So you also need fittings to make all this work as well. But that's it. Let's see if we can get it to work. The first step is to jack up your car and throw it on some jack stands. The second step is to drain the oil and remove the oil filter so we can install the adapter. 
We're test fitting the whole system together to make sure that it's all complete and then we can install the correct adapter. The O-ring to AN fittings can then be screwed down and then we'll start to work out where it's all going to go underneath the truck. The kit comes with brackets, but to make sure we get the best fit, we're going to cut them down and then re-drill them. Because of the way the engine sits in this truck, there is heaps of room underneath the cab that's protected by an under tray. We're going to bolt our filter relocation and thermostat to the floor of the truck. Once we've worked out where they're going to go, we're going to make up all the hoses and join it all together. Are you going for the front hole or the back hole? I was going to do the, the top hole and okay. then the bottom after. I think the top first, then the bottom probably makes more sense. Okay, hold but on. But I'm, I'm screwing it. Can you feel that? Wait, yeah, it's, it's vibrating on my finger. Stay there. I don't have my tool on it. Have you got both nuts or just one? Oh, I've, just, I've got my fingers wrapped around one nut. Now you screw that. Yep. Is that working? Oh, I can feel you going in. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm like twisting it. I can't it. see it, but I can feel it. I'm twisting it. Clock clockwise. Does that come up clockwise for you as well? Uh, no, it's it's getting harder though. Oh really? Yeah, it is. It's tightening up. Oh, it's because of, it's because these have got a ring on them. Bottom hole. Hold on. Is that one tightening up? No, no. Wait a minute. I'm, well, I'm, that one got tighter heaps quicker. I'm not actually in there. I don't know why oh, you couldn't on. feel that. Can stop. you just can you stop? Because I'm not in there yet. Stop screwing it. Yeah, just hold on. Just be patient, man. <laughs> Sorry. Have you got your spanner on it? Okay, it's on there now. Yep. All right. I'm there. It is screwing it with the thing. Oh, you know, it's because these are those locked wow, up Wow, that one is really tightening up. Is it? Has it? Well, sorry, what about your nuts? No, it's because they're like locked. But that one's not like there's only the tip is coming through. Oh, right, okay. It's not tightening down yet. No. Keep feels, going. Feels pretty good from this side, man. Okay. The bottom one's just like way tighter. The bottom tighter. one's definitely tighter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. All right. All oh, right. no, that's it now. That's pulling in. Are we done? Yep. Or do I need to keep going? Uh, keep going on the bottom one. Oh, hang on, it's real, dude, I can barely move now. Yeah, hold on. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Dude, it, that's great. Is that on? Look at that, that's a relocated oil that's filter. professional. I mean, But sorted. now we've just got to actually make sure that... <laughs> can you still get it on there? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, great. The thermostat acts like a switch that removes the cooler itself from the loop if the oil isn't up to temperature. The cooler is connected to one side and our supply and return to the other side. To keep an eye on the condition of our oil and performance of our oil cooler, we're going to add temperature and pressure sensors. These can be screwed into the engine itself using adapters or many relocation kits come with threaded holes ready for the sensors. This is an optional step which is actually tracking your oil temperature. Now if you want to be super scientific you do this before you even put your oil cooler on but because we've got the thermostat we can actually see what the oil temperature is doing. Um, you can either use an external gauge, uh, just look at your oil temperature and your oil pressure or you can, if you've got a programmable ECU which has spare inputs, you can actually send it into your ECU and then have it on a readout gauge like this. The benefit being that you can log it so you can see your uh, drag pass or your track time and actually see what your oil temperature is doing based on everything else that's going on so I've just got to add one signal ground and one input into the ECU I've already got another one sitting there waiting to go and those two sensors are all done my sensors are calibrated and working so now it's time to mount the oil cooler itself you can hang it out the front of your car full bozo style, but I've found a spot tucked up near the radiator just like an RX-7. It's worth mentioning that oil cooler positioning is important and that blocking too much airflow to the rest of your cooling system can have a negative effect on your overall efficiency. Cooling your oil to then make your coolant hotter isn't a winning situation. In our case, there is heaps of room and the truck doesn't seem to suffer from poor airflow. Damaging your cooler with rocks or debris is a potential issue, so make sure it's protected if you can. If you've got a car with lots of aftermarket support, a kit will bypass all these steps as it will come with the correct length hoses and all the required mounting hardware. Or if you want to save some bucks or if you have to go custom, make up your own brackets and send it. I'm painting the mild steel brackets so they don't rust and the cooler can be installed into place. 
we can then make up the lines using the AN fittings to fit all the various parts of the system. So a bit of buyer beware, when I originally bought this oil cooler kit, I bought it for a different build and it came with the three hoses because it didn't have a thermostat. Once I started reading up on how to do it with a streetcar, I realized I needed a thermostat, which means I needed extra hose. Now I was hoping I'd be able to cut this up, but this particular kit, you cannot chop it up and reuse the ends because of the way that the sheath and everything is in there. It's actually a set length. I may still be able to use some of this, and so that's actually not a complete waste, but what I am gonna to have to do is custom make my own hoses. So I've got some of these Raceworks AN uh, fittings, they're dash 10 and there's a couple of different types of hose in there, which means you can construct your own custom length hoses, which is what we're gonna do right now. Attach the actual cooler to the thermostat, then run the thermostat to the rest of the setup, and we're good to go. Hoses like this aren't as forgiving as rubber hoses, but if you get it wrong, you can reuse the fittings. They come in various angles like 45, 90, or even 180 to get your hoses pointed in the right direction. Now the stainless wire in this hose can get a bit stabby, so I'd highly recommend you glove up you can get Mighty Carmel's gloves from our shop, which I'll leave a thing so you can click it right there. Perfect for this, still a good feel, but it means you're not gonna constantly get stabbed when you're trying to screw these in. Let's do it. So our adapter plate is installed where the old oil filter used to go and now our relocation oil filter kit component is up here. That is going over into our thermostat. And how are you going, Martin? Good, just tightening up the last thing. So the next trick is to pre-fill this with oil. Uh, just because there's no point running the whole thing dry. We'll pick a point, we'll fill the thing up as much as we can, and we'll keep an eye on oil level. The other thing we're gonna do is we're also gonna crank it with the injectors off to try and build oil pressure before the thing just starts running to make sure we can see oil pressure. And we can see that because we've got a sensor up here, and that will tell us that the system is pressurized and ready to lubricate our engine in a cool manner. Is this overkill for a little K truck? Possibly. No. No, it's not, Martin, because we're going to be doing hectic off-road. We are, yeah, and it does get a bit hot. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. We've got logs. We did some logging before, and we'll be able to do a bit of logging afterwards and see if it has any effect, if at all, which I expect it will. If you're changing the type of oil filter like we are, check with the manufacturer to make sure the filter performs the same. Some have drain-back valves or internal parts that differ between models. We've used one hose from our original kit and made the rest due to the weird nature of our particular truck. It all fits nicely and should do the job of keeping our oil temperatures in check. Next, we're gonna pre-fill as much of the system as we can and then crank the engine to make sure we're seeing oil pressure with no leaks. The Haltech has a checkbox for turning off the injection system, but if you're on a factory ECU, you can physically disconnect them or the fuel pump. The oil pressure can take a little while to build, but you wanna see a minimum of 20 PSI on the gauge before you even think about running it. This is all about checking for leaks so it doesn't spray your shed with oil when it finally starts. The truck usually idles at around 45 psi of oil pressure, but it varies based on temperature and RPM. Cranked it with the fuel off to see if there's any leaks, and there was one, so I'm glad we did it. Uh, just went into the oil trailer there, so now we're gonna drop it down and run it, and make sure there's still no leaks. Leaks are bad. And we're all done. Next, we can drop the truck off the jack stands and then test everything out. Injectors back on. Check our oil pressure. Let's do it, now or never. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, sweet. Happy as, there it is. Oil pressure. If we go across, we can see oil temperature, which at the moment is just ambient, like 20 degrees Celsius. We go across to oil pressure. That's awesome. And on the gauge, you can combine them so you can see temperature and pressure together. Yeah, nice. Which is probably where I'll leave it while I drive it around. The ECU is still sort of tweaking the fuel map and doing a good job. The longer you drive it, the better it gets. Still needs more timing to really accelerate properly and also to, you know, give me the confidence to rev it hard because I'm being very gentle with the throttle. And I'm also logging every drive at the moment. So if anything does go wrong, I've got a log of what happened. And also just for interest's sake, I can just send it to Scotty at Haltech and say, hey man, what do you think of this? And he can run an educated eyeball over it in a matter of minutes, sort of discern what's happening. At the moment, we're sitting at about 70 degrees. I've been driving for maybe five or 10 minutes. So it does take a little bit of time for that oil temperature to come up and also shows how much stress you're actually putting on the cooling system and overall how well the engine's being cooled, um, which at the moment seems pretty good. 70 degrees is fine, it'll creep up higher than that. Whereas the coolant's sitting at about 80, mid 80s, 
So the oil temperature is a little bit lower than the water temperature at the moment. After first seeing one of these things at a temple in Tokyo and at Daihatsu's headquarters in Japan, I bought my own one and have now owned it for about a year. In that time, it's done countless jobs and well and truly earned its place in the garage. Along with plenty of odd jobs and tip runs, there's been some unforgettable experiences and I made some new friends as well. We took it adventuring off-road and into the bush and to the top of Australia's most famous racetrack. Driving up hills is always slow, but gives you plenty of time to take in the view. The only thing it ever seemed to be missing was awesome turbo noises, so we fixed that with a custom turbo conversion and a full rewire to make it all work. Don't need cable ties. Then with some mad custom made wheels and flares to complete the look, it's now done and I absolutely love it. Big thanks to this guy for convincing me to buy this truck. It's brought a lot of joy, this thing. Could have bought a big tipper, would have used it five times and gone, that was boring. But instead we've got this mad evolution of uh, stuff and mods that's happened to it. The wheels I look amazing. I mainly wanted you to stop talking about it. It gets, well there's that too. Um, so it gets so many, so many smiles and thumbs up and looks and, and yeah, people laugh at it a lot too, but that's sort of all part of the experience of driving it around. And now the oil will stay nice and cool and maybe it'll get bush bashed again in the not too distant future. Do you know what will give me a smile and you a thumbs up, Mun? What? It's something that you said yet I've yet to seen and experience it, so I don't know if it's bullshit or not. Okay. You reckon it goes so, do, do, while lifting up the tray. Oh, that's a challenge. Is challenge. that actually true? Yeah, challenge Can accepted. Can it dose while lifting up the tray? There's one way to find out. That's my challenge for you today, Martin. Come on, let's hear it. Look at him, <laughs> look how stoked he is. This is like me saying to a dog, I challenge you to chase this stick and then chew it and then go another dog's leg. I don't know for sure if it will do it, but let's try. We're about to find out, mate. It's pretty exciting. All right, here we go. PTO engaged. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah! <laughs> Achievement unlocked. That's awesome. All right. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. That is Mighty Car Mods, of course. If you want to support the show, uh, you can grab some merch from our shop. Australian owned, Australian run by a couple of Australians. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.